or your team basically so i want to start talking about git um, so as i'm saying here um, git uh, and there's a quote from their, their website uh, is a version control system for tracking changes in your source, source code so, uh, during software development so what it's good about git well git is so popular it's huge um, and it was uh, created uh, by the guy that was working on the Linux distribution because he was uh, having some troubles with his version uh, control uh, tool. So he created this one and it became like huge. It's, it's amazing. Uh, yes, yeah, so here I have created uh, for you guys the um, uh, like this little tutorial. Like this website basically has the tutorial of what we will go through. Uh, but yes, those links that you are posting there, thank you so much, um, will help you guys throughout this. So, why using Git? is because it's very powerful and uh, it's basically what I will recommend you guys to use. Uh, and this will help you to achieve that collaboration that I'm talking about. Um, Alright, so let's start uh, on this. So I have prepared this website um, with uh, like some like instructions on how to start with Git on your computer. Uh, either if you have Windows, Mac, or Linux, it's pretty easy once you know what you're doing. Uh, but if you don't know, uh, it could be a little bit uh, like overwhelming. Uh, but basically what we want to do is we want to install Git in your computer, in your machine. Uh, and for example, in Windows, it's pretty easy. You just have to download it from the website, the one that they posted there as well. Uh, and then just follow the instructions. Um, once you finish that, this is a, like a, an extra step that I recommend doing. It's not like mandatory. Uh, but it's good to have and in setting up your like global uh, variables like your name and your and your email this is because every time that you will push and then we will get a little bit more into what's a push uh, but like when you submit your changes your code uh, no uh, so do the mac always have to have an intel chip nope uh, not necessary um, this will run uh, independent on on which chip you have um, it's for all platforms i have used it uh, on different type of machines and it works perfectly fine uh, that's a valid question so uh, yes i was telling you like on each push it needs to know from who did that push came from right so it's good to have your name and, and your email just in case uh, so i will recommend uh, all of you guys to um, once this is finished and if you want to go through this website or the video you can go ahead and give it a try yourself uh, try to install on on your machine uh, if you have any troubles please feel free to contact me i will be more than glad to help you set it up uh, as I told you, like it's pretty straightforward if you follow these uh, steps, but sometimes it could be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, okay, now the next step that I consider important for this course is that you, with Git, uh, you will be like pushing code to somewhere, right? Um, initially, you when you use Git, you are you you can use git just for like your internal uh, version control so you are able to just have a local version of git uh, which is basically what it is git is just a local uh, version control to keep track of your uh, of your changes on your code um but of course what we want to do is to use it like online right like uh, in the cloud basically um, so we need to use like third-party um, companies to be able to do this um, uh, for this case i'm using github 
Um, I will go a little bit in depth on this on the, on the next step, but I want to explain you why we want to generate an SSH key. So because the, our code will go into the cloud, basically into a server from a third party, uh, we need a way to authenticate ourselves when we are pushing our code. Um, there is a couple of ways to do it, or well, there's actually two ways to do it. Um, uh, and is through an HTTPS uh, link, basically, where you will be able to just like push your code there and you need to give your credentials uh, to log in and to uh, and like your login and, and password. Um, so once once you do that and you're authenticated, uh, you are able to commit your changes. Uh, the Git projects, like your projects, could be private or, or public. So if you have a public, a private uh, project, which will uh, it, they are called repositories. Um, you want everybody that is gonna like access them to have access to it, right? Like if some, like if your friend, your partner, your your team is going to access that code, uh, they need to authenticate themselves. Uh, and I think that the the best way to do it is through the SSH keys. So I have here a little uh, in, like phrase, like paragraph of what's an SSH key. Uh, and it's basically just an access credential using the SSH protocol. And this is basically having two keys. Uh, one is a private and one is a public. And just, just those two systems that have those two keys will be able to authenticate themselves. So that's why I will generate one key for myself, which is the private key, which I only have. And the other one will be given to that third party. I will give it to them. And every time that I commit, they will compare that, uh, that, that key to see if I am who I'm saying I am. Uh, and that's, that way I will be authenticated right away without having to prompt any username and password. Uh, so as well, for this, I'm, uh, I set it up uh, some instructions for all the operating systems on how to generate your SSH key. Uh, again, this one might be a little bit more complex. Uh, if you don't really want to do it, you can like just jump uh, this step. Like you need to get Git, uh, but this is like kind of optional. I will recommend doing it. And it's a good example for you to like start uh, getting familiar with the command line. It's, it's like a pretty good uh, exercise. Uh, it's, it's not something very difficult to do. You will have to just like... Uh, Take like put these commands in your command in your command line, which for those of you that don't don't know it, like it looks like this. Uh, that little scary black window <laughs> uh, is very useful, and when you're using Git, you will see it pretty often. So I will recommend you guys uh, going through this tutorial and and getting your SSH key. Okay, so now I was talking about GitHub and um, this little cat here. So GitHub um, is one of the biggest companies that provides a uh, hosting for software developer development uh, version control using Git. That's why we are using Git as well. Uh, I like GitHub a lot, but it's not the only solution available. Uh, for example, there is Bitbucket, uh, this one right here. Uh, there is GitLab as well. Uh, for this one is often used as well. Uh, for enterprise purpose, um, but I really like GitHub, and for the sake of this course, we will go through it. So, if you want to know more about it, here is a link to the website, um, and I recommend you guys like getting an account on it. I set it up here as well, like a quick tutorial on the next step we're gonna follow. So, once you have created your account. Uh, and you sign up uh, into your account, the next step will be to set up your SSH key that we just created. So in that way, uh, GitHub will know your computer, basically. So um, every time... Oh yeah, uh, that's a great comment. So recently, um, it was last year, 
they made the private repositories uh, free. So for a long time uh, that I've been using GitHub, I was paying for the subscription uh, to have all my repositories private when I was working on my private projects. Uh, but last year, that was like a huge deal for me and for a lot of people, I will say. Um, GitHub made their their uh, repositories, like the private repositories, free. So you don't need to pay any more for it and it's great. So uh, it's awesome for you guys to try it out. Uh, once you are logged in, we want to set up our SSH key. So we will go to this screen, like you will log in. Uh, like it looks something like that um, you will go to settings then the idea is to go to SSH and GPG keys and once you're here uh, you will want to add a new key so the way to add this new key is, is pretty simple I just put the three steps that you need to do uh, first step, just, just give it a, a name, like the title doesn't really matter. It's something for yourself to identify this key. So if it's your home computer, just you can just name it my home computer, or if it's your laptop, your laptop. Uh, but the idea is that you will paste your SSH key here, uh, your public SSH key, don't paste the private. So there's a couple of ways to get that public SSH key. Uh, one way is using the command line. So as well, if you feel like trying the, the command line, I posted here the two ways from Windows or Mac and Linux because it's the same on how to, to get and copy that SSH key using the command line. Uh, but if you prefer, you can just go out like on Windows and Mac. Uh, you can go to your folder. Uh, it's usually going to be on C and your user and then you will have to go to SSH and here you will have your public key. Um, most likely this folder, the SSH folder, is going to be hidden. So you need to, to show your hidden folders. And I have a couple, uh, like the two necessary uh, like ways to do it. Um, uh, the links here. Uh, because sometimes people don't know how to to show the folders and it's pretty normal like even on Mac uh, it's not as straightforward as you will think okay so once you get your SSH key you will just copy it here and you will add your SSH key and that's basically what you will have to do um, okay Thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, if you want to keep uh, looking at, at the course, it's going to be recorded and you can check it out later. But awesome. Thank you for being here and see you on the next one.